Hello everybody and welcome to a video that I promise is not clickbait. This is really important. If you are going to build a gaming PC in 2021, please listen to this. Or don't and have egg on your face. The choice is yours. Because you see, while PC gaming itself isn't necessarily that complicated and even building a gaming PC, I think most people will be able to do it without any real issue. If you're going to be using a Ryzen CPU, then all of the motherboards that you're going to be looking at are actually a little bit out of date because they're going to be using an older generation of BIOS, which means that if you actually put this chip in any of these systems and don't do anything, it won't work. But worry not, because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through absolutely everything that you need to know about these motherboards, about the issue, but more importantly, how to fix it. So if you are gonna build a gaming PC in 2021, you're not only prepared, but you're very much up for it. Getting good Wi-Fi signal can be tricky, and one router just doesn't always cut the mustard. Enter Netgear's super smart Nighthawk mesh, the seamless Wi-Fi 6 system that is perfect for busy households packed with gamers. Not only will you be maximizing your speeds, but you can roam across the nodes seamlessly, thanks to one single SSID and password. It's time to go fast and bring Wi-Fi 6 into your life. Check out the epic Nighthawk mesh today, down with that link below. Essentially, when you're buying a CPU, you have probably notice that it has a socket type, and this is what's gonna allow it to actually go in your motherboard. You wanna match these up, so if you get an AM4 socket, you're going to want an AM4 CPU, and vice versa. But what normally happens with motherboards is that when you get a new release, so let's say the 11th gen Intel CPUs, you get new motherboards. Z590 means that it will work with the 11th gen CPUs from Intel, you can pop them in, you don't need to do anything else, and it will work. But the problem is, with the Ryzen motherboards, these haven't actually been updated for the latest generation of 5000 series Ryzen chips, which means that a lot of these boards out in the box won't actually know what these CPUs are. And while some of them will work a little bit and will let you get into the BIOS, most of them won't, which means that when you boot up your PC for the first time, if you didn't know this was a problem, then while technically they are compatible, they're not actually compatible at all and the PC will not do anything. And obviously having a non-functioning gaming PC is definitely a bit of a bad thing. It's not really gonna be getting many FPS, but there is a solution and that solution is pretty simple. It's just to update your BIOS to the latest version that does actually support these chips. However, this in itself causes a little bit of an issue because traditionally, the only way to actually update your BIOS is to have an older generation CPU that the board does support. You need to power it on, you have RAM, you turn on the system, and then you flash the BIOS in the BIOS utility, which is fine if you have one of those chips lying around, but if you don't, then you'd be a bit out of luck. You'd have to go out and buy a new CPU or get hold of something just to flash the motherboard, and at the very least, it's gonna take a long time, and at the worst, it's gonna cost you a whole lot of money, which would be bad. Which is exactly why I wanted to make this video to show you that if you are going to be building a Ryzen PC, there is one big decision that you need to make before you do anything else, really, that is gonna completely save your gaming PC, and that is to buy a motherboard that's Support something that's known as either USB flashback, QFlash Plus, or similar names. And essentially, this is a clever little utility that comes with a lot of new motherboards. This enables flashing the BIOS, getting the motherboard updated to support these chips without needing an older generation CPU. So if you're building everything from scratch and you don't have an old CPU lying around, this is gonna make the difference between you having a gaming PC that works and one that doesn't. All of the motherboards that we have on our desk, other than this one, actually do support this utility. Here we have the QFlash Plus on the Aorus board. The ASUS one is called BIOS Flashback. And on this MSI, actually very cheap, very entry-level motherboard, the X570-A Pro, it doesn't say what it's called. It just has a flash BIOS button. I would highly advise doing this all before you start building your gaming PC, just in case you run into any issues, you've then not got the stress, I guess, of having your whole system completed. And you're essentially isolating the motherboard BIOS from all of the other issues that might come from building a PC. Of course, if you're an expert like me, you never have any problems with your gaming PCs ever. It's definitely not a weekly occurrence. But the thing you're actually looking for is, well, we need to grab this IO shield to show you this. There is gonna be a special USB port on your motherboard. Only one of them will work for this and then if you move up a little bit there should be a button as well this asus board again it's called bios flashback but it might be called something different depending on the brand of motherboard that you've gone for grab your motherboard and place it on top of the box or anywhere non-conductive really if you do have an esd strap i would highly advise wearing it now just to keep yourself and your components nice and safe you won't need a cpu or ram or anything for a while so don't worry about that but you will need a power supply to actually be able to power on this board and of course flash the bios 
Oh, that's funny. I seem to have lost all of the cables for my power supply. Looks like we're not using the deep call. They must be at my parents' place. Grab your power supply, plug in any cables that you're going to need. I have a feeling it's just the ATX, but to be on the safe side, I am using the CPU here as well. But obviously there is no CPU in the socket, so probably not required, but I don't think it's going to hurt. Your motherboard then should resemble something like this. Do not touch your motherboard once you've actually connected your power supply to the mains for obvious reasons. Best case scenario, you hurt your hardware. Worst case, you hurt yourself. Make sure your power supply is actually turned off until you're going to need to flash the BIOS. The next step is a little bit tricky for rather comical reasons, and that is to grab yourself a little USB flash drive. And this is what we're going to use to actually plug into that USB port and install the latest BIOS. However, you need to make sure that it is formatted in FAT32. And these two drives that I have here or I should say these two drives that I have here don't actually support FAT32 because they're too good. The capacity is too too high and the speed is too fast. But any older USB 2, maybe USB 3 if it's a, an older one, is going to work. Just make sure it's formatted in FAT32 and there is nothing else on it. At this stage, you're going to need a laptop or some other computer to be able to access the web. You could use your smartphone if you're super fancy, but Probably not the best idea. Take a good old look at the name of your motherboard. This is the Tough Gaming B550 Plus. So you're going to want to type that into Google. Click on the link that will take you to your manufacturer's website for that motherboard. Then hit support and then go over to driver and utility. Find the tab that says BIOS and firmware. And then you should have a list of BIOSes appear in a list. And I would actually recommend not using a beta version unless you need to for any reason. If it's maybe like specific memory support or they've added a big feature that you think you need, then by all means use it. But to be safe, I would recommend just using the latest one that's properly certified. Extract that to a new folder. And then if you're using an ASUS motherboard, you should have this little BIOS renamer tool where you can just double click that and it will actually convert the name to the name that it needs to be. But if you're using a Gigabyte board or an MSI, then you're going to need to call it something else. I think the Gigabyte boards are all in caps, gigabyte.bin. Make sure the file is named properly or your motherboard will not pick it up and this won't work. Source, me. Insert your USB drive into the computer, copy it across, again, making sure that this is the only file on the drive. I'm just using this IO shield to make sure that I'm plugging it into the right port. Is this one, again, labeled BIOS. I'm then going to turn the power supply on. I'm breaking my own rule just to show you this, but look, there are some little lights at the bottom of this. That is a good sign. Pretty straightforward stuff so far, but now is the point in the video where I am genuinely going to beg, like, beg beg you to look at your motherboard manual before proceeding on this next step. Why do they still give you optical drives? Why is that in the manual? For all those people that still have one, which is that one person. Press the BIOS flashback button for three seconds, three seconds, until the flashback LED blinks three times, three for three, indicating that the BIOS flashback function is enabled. Moment of truth, let's press this button for three seconds, shall we? One, two, three. Can you see that? Again, do not touch your motherboard while it's on. I could be dead now. I'm not, fortunately. This is now just gonna blink nice and gently, probably for a few minutes, and when it goes out, it should mean that the BIOS has been successfully flashed. And I imagine that will blink a different color if there are any issues. Now just amuse yourself for a little bit. Oh, it's gone out, it's gone out. I was just about to say it's very difficult to make conversation about a flashing green light, but it's gone, which is a good sign, which I think means we're probably ready for the next step, which is to actually test that the system works. Never been so excited about a green LED before. Don't be tempted to disconnect everything and start building your PC. Give it five minutes just to make sure if anything is still happening that it's finished. That's, that's probably a good recommendation. Then you can actually turn your power supply off at the wall, unplug it, Open up your CPU slot, grab your Ryzen processor, line up that gold arrow and drop it into place and secure it back down. Grab yourself some RAM. You can use just a single stick, but you may as well test that everything works in one go. Please, please, please don't get carried away. Do remember to actually put a CPU cooler on your PC. You don't have to mount it properly if you wanna be really edgy, but I would highly advise fitting everything properly and not cooking your brand new Ryzen CPU that you've probably been waiting in a queue for two months for and moaning about on PC-centric videos. I'm so insulting, aren't I? I'm, I'm horrible. You're gonna need your graphics card. Hang this over the edge of the box. 
very carefully plug in your power supply connections, bearing in mind that this isn't screwed in. And then it should just be a case of connecting your graphics card to the monitor. And essentially here we've just simulated a proper fully completed PC. There's no storage in it. We don't need that for the time being. Plug it all back in, hit that power button and forget that there's no manual power switch on this particular board. So grab a screwdriver, find the pins for the power switch and then just jump them. I've got really shaky hands. This is not ideal. We have action. That was exciting jumping those pins. That's the most amount of action I've had in a long time. Loving the RGB on this as well. Definitely uh, an essential piece of the puzzle. Hooray! That's it. New CPU installed. CPU fan error. Don't worry about that. We'll fix it later. You have now proved that your PC works and you've actually built most of it up, which is a good thing. So it's a very easy, complicated thing to do, I think. But what if you are in a situation where you have a motherboard like this one that doesn't actually support USB BIOS flashback? Well, you're going to need to have an older generation CPU, which frankly, there are a lot of Ryzen CPUs out there at the moment. So maybe you're upgrading from an older motherboard or something. So here we're going to go into tool. And then here you can see it says ASUS EZ Flash 3 utility. And it pretty much works in exactly the same way. Plug in your USB drive and then just do it while being able to see exactly what's going on. I really hope this video has helped though. If it has, please smash that like button. Let me know any comments you have or any questions I'm going to be around. So please don't be afraid. Let me know down in that comment section below. If you do wanna check out the parts that were featured in this video or any parts, I guess, that will give you a really good looking PC build, then as always, you can find these listed down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, do check out Netgear's Nighthawk Mesh. These tiny units are so discreet, yet pack some serious tech to give you a sublime Wi-Fi experience. The blazing fast Nighthawk MK63 has a range of 3,250 square feet, but this can be expanded even further just by adding more satellites. Get rid of Wi-Fi woes once and for all with Netgear's Nighthawk Mesh. Check it out today, down with that link below. A massive thank you for you guys for actually watching this video though. If you do have any suggestions on other similar things like this you'd want to know, again, let me know down in that comment section. Do get subscribed for more videos just like this and if you want to see some other videos like full PC build guides you can find those in the end screen. Thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next one.